Hello. When I was attending the first church Vivian and I attended regularly after leaving the Watchtower back in the 1980s into the early 90s, we had at that church an interesting study group. It was officially a C.S. Lewis study group and we did study some of Lewis's works. But we also took up other books for discussion over a period of several years while that group was flourishing, among which was this one. Neil Postman, Amusing Ourselves to Death, Public Discourse in the Age of Show Business. Here's Neil, Neil Postman. He was perhaps the most influential critic, social critic that is, writer, educator, and communications theorist during the 1980s, 90s, and into the 2000s. He died in 2003, and I can't help but think, well, can't help but wonder what Neil Postman would make of what's developed since his death in the way of media and media effect. I, I thought, in addition to telling you a little about, about Postman himself, I'd read his foreword to the book where he lays out his thesis. It says about his work, he is a professor of communication arts and sciences at New York University, educated at the State University of New York and Columbia University. He is holder of the Christian Lindbach Award for Excellence in Teaching and is also editor of Etc., a journal of general semantics. His 15 previous books include The Teaching, rather Teaching as a Subversive Activity, The Soft Revolution, and The Disappearance of Childhood. He's married and has three children and lives in Flushing, New York. By the way, you can see some videos of Postman being interviewed on YouTube. Uh, I, re I remember particularly an interview he did with Charlie Rose. You might want to check that out. Two Postman's forward to this book. He says, we were keeping our eye on 1984. This is published in 1985, by the way. We were keeping our eye on 1984 when the year came and the prophecy didn't. Thoughtful Americans sang softly in praise of themselves. <laughs> the roots of liberal democracy had held. Wherever else the terror had happened, we, at least, had not been visited by Orwellian nightmares. But we had forgotten that alongside Orwell's dark vision, there was another, slightly older, slightly less well-known, equally chilling, Aldous Huxley's Brave New World. Contrary to common belief, even among the educated, Huxley and Orwell did not prophesy the same thing. Orwell warns that we will be overcome by an externally imposed oppression, but in Huxley's vision, no big brother is required to deprive people of their autonomy, maturity, and history. As he saw it, that is Huxley, people will come to love their oppression, to adore the technologies that undo their capacities to think. What Orwell feared were those who would ban books. What Huxley feared was that there would be no reason to ban a book, for there would be no one who wanted to read one. Orwell feared those who would deprive us of information. Huxley feared those who would give us so much that we would be reduced to passivity and egoism. Orwell feared that the truth would be concealed from us. Huxley feared the truth would be drowned in a sea of irrelevance. Orwell feared that we would become a captive culture. Huxley feared we would become a trivial culture, preoccupied with some equivalent of the feelies, <laughs> the orgy-porgy, and the centrifugal Bundle, bumble puppy, centrifugal bumble puppy. I had to think about that for a while. As Huxley remarked in Brave New World Revisited, the civil liber libertarians and rationalists who are ever on the alert to oppose tyranny fail to take into account man's almost infinite appetite for distractions. In 1984, Huxley added, people are controlled by inflicting pain. In Brave New World, they are controlled by inflicting pleasure. In short, Orwell feared that what we hate will ruin us. Huxley feared that what we love will ruin us. This book is about the possibility that Huxley, not Orwell, was right. 
So in the next video I'd like to bring you what Neil Postman said about the crisis of our time and that crisis involves a word that most of us never hear unless we study philosophy. It's the crisis of epistemology, that is how we learn, how we gather information. I want to put a link on your screen too to two videos we've done elsewhere. One, Vivian's reaction to reading Animal Farm, which was all she would read when we were leaving the Watchtower having endless arguments. She would read George Orwell if I suggested it, but she wouldn't talk about Watchtower Doctrine, so I thought Orwell is just the thing. and. It worked out that way too. She saw the parallels right away with the way the world was developing. The world of the Watchtower in her case. Also a link to Jacques Ellul's book. I'll put on your screen. His book Propaganda where Ellul points out something that's quite unexpected if you don't think about it more deeply. Namely that the only likely community or civilization that is prone to the influence of propaganda would be a semi-literate or barely literate public. Illiterate people are immune to propaganda. So this is one of the insights Elo brings us in the book Propaganda and I bring you some of the quotes in the video you see on your screen. Next time, the crisis of epistemology that is upon the whole world right now much, much worse than it was in the days of Neil Postman, actually.